I wanted to take the time in this video to show you guys something pretty cool that I've been witnessing in my 90 gallon community fish tank. Uh, this tank has some plecos, some algae eaters, some little tetras, a uh, couple of non-aggressive or very low aggression cichlid species, and I picked up two red jewel cichlids from a local fish store a couple of months back. And what I didn't realize when I bought them was that they were a male and a female, and that they were, I believe, already mated. They had already mated, they were paired. So when I put them into my fish tank, only about two weeks after, I saw them guarding some little fry. So they had successfully spawned in my community fish tank, even with all the other fish swimming about. Um, I have some rainbow sharks, I have a bunch of different things in this fish tank. And nothing ate the eggs, they were able to protect the eggs in this community setting, and they were still willing to mate with so many other fish around. And you can see right here, the two of them are taking shifts guarding the eggs while the other one will go off and eat or do whatever they need to do. And my two jewel cichlids right here, they don't have the best color. You see some other people's jewel cichlids have a lot more blue dots. Mine are kind of plain looking, but I'm hoping as they grow, they'll maybe get some more color to them. But these guys have been prolific breeders. Uh, since I've gotten them, they've bred maybe five or six times each time with over a hundred fry and they're breeding at like a very very rapid rate once every about three weeks they have a full batch of fry and what you're seeing right here on the back of this plant is actually the little hatched eggs and they're still attached to the egg sac and they're using it up they're not free swimming yet so they have been moved by the cichlids to this spot from where they were earlier on the rock and I know this this fish species isn't usually recommended for a community tank but due to the size of my community tank and the fish I had in it and how well planted it was I felt that it was doable and it has been very doable um, they haven't messed with anybody and nobody has messed with them um, they've been able to function very well and there hasn't been any aggression between them and any of the other fish species in the tank and what you're gonna see right here is all the fry that are produced every single time they breed uh, well over a hundred every time and I try to get to them within 24 hours of them becoming free swimming because this is this is the only time that this being a community tank comes into play as a negative. Um, they the fry don't last very long. The parents do the best they can to protect them, but in this community tank, there's just too many people trying to eat them from all angles, and they don't usually last more than two days. I've noticed. So, at the first sight, I see the fry. I take out all but maybe 15 or 20 of them. That way the parents can still have a chance to raise them as best they can, although that doesn't usually succeed. I still like them to feel that they have the ability to try. And what I've been placing the fry in is a net breeder, and I've been putting that in the same community tank. And I've been having some trouble with this. I've had f about four or five batches of fry I've tried to raise, and out of all of those batches, I only have seven from one batch that I've successfully raised past the fry stage. And the reason for this is because I've had a lot of the fry, almost all of them, either find some way to escape that net breeder or other fish will find a way to suck them out of it. The best way you're going to be able to do this is if you set up some small, maybe 5 or 10 gallon uh, fry tank with just a heater and maybe a sponge filter. And that's going to be your best bet to allow them to free swim. I've noticed too, out of that batch of 7 that I had, there were originally 10 in that batch, and once they started getting to be a little bigger than Fry, they started to kill off their siblings too, so you really gotta make sure you have enough room for them all to have their own space, or they'll just start killing each other off. So this has definitely been a learning process for me, and I'm hoping that in the next couple of batches of Fry that I can really raise a good number of them, and not just four or five. And I also wanted to share my experiences with this, and share what I thought was surprising about the the two jewel cichlids breeding this prolifically in a community tank and I think the key to that was just really the size of the tank it's a 90 gallon and the fact that it had some pretty large plants in it they were able to dig out their own little corner and defend it pretty well because of the size of the tank nobody went near them so if any of you guys have bred this species before I'd love to hear from you guys about maybe some tips or experiences that you guys have had with it I think it's one of the cooler uh, cichlid species because of the really nice coloring it gets when they become sexually mature and because of how well the parents will take care of their young but anyways guys if you found this interesting in any way hit that like button and as always thank you for watching